Welcome to Unit 3, Working with the DOM. So what in the heck is the DOM? Well, DOM stands for Document Object Model. And basically, it's a structured way to think about the HTML that you're using on your page. As you can see by this expertly designed flowchart, I've taken a very, very basic HTML page and broken it down into a tree. So for example, the first paragraph has two images inside it. The form has a couple of different form fields, and there's a last paragraph as well. Now this is a very, very simplified way of looking at a web page, but you could think of the DOM as simply as a way of saying, here is how I address part of my page and do stuff with it. So what can we do with the DOM? Well, we can add or remove classes. We can set and get different attributes. We can also modify what's actually seen in those parts of the web page as well. And we can also kind of move things around. And finally, we can also completely change the contents of what you're seeing in a particular DOM item. So let's start with changing classes. So there's two simple APIs, the first add class and the second remove class probably pretty obvious. What's nice though is that jQuery is smart enough to recognize if you already have a class. So if I try to add the, add the same class twice, jQuery won't mind. If I try to remove a class that doesn't exist, again, jQuery is totally cool with that. Here's a very simple example. I begin by saying, find the item with the ID intro and add the CSS class defined by highlight. That would be defined somewhere in my style sheet. The next example finds the DOM item with the ID footer and calls remove class on it to get rid of the footer class on that particular item. Let's look at a simple example of this. Okay, in this example, I have a couple of paragraphs. The first one has an ID of intro, and the last one has a class of footer. On top, I've defined two CSS styles, highlight, and as well as one for footer. At the bottom of my page, all I'm doing is running add class to modify intro. I'm adding highlight to it. And then I'm taking the footer class off that last paragraph. So if we look at this in the browser, you'll see how the actual CSS has been modified on the fly with the jQuery. Okay, here's my web page. You can see that the first paragraph now has that highlight class applied, and the last paragraph, which did have the footer class, that's been removed. How about changing attributes? Again, it's gonna be pretty simple. With jQuery, I can do dot prop something to get the value of a particular property. And to set it, I basically pass one more value. So again, if I just do prop something, it'll get that particular property value. But if I do prop something and then pass a second attribute and new value, it will actually set it. Now you may see a lot of code using ATTR attribute. This was something used in the past and now it's not recommended. So in general, you should be using the prop method instead. Here's a live example of it. In the first line, I'm actually reading the title property from a particular image. I'm using console.log to send it to my browser's developer tools. In the next line, I'm actually changing the value of that image, changing the title value of that image to something new. So let's look at this running in the browser. Okay, here's the code for our demo. It has one HTML tag in it, image. I'm specifying a title. And then in my jQuery code, the first thing I'll do is read from it, and then I will set it. Now, if you don't know, the title value is what you see when you mouse over. So my jQuery code is actually gonna change what I see in, in that little pop-up when I bring my mouse over that particular image. Let's take a look at this running in the browser. Okay, here is that web page actually run in my browser. I can see in my DevTools that it output the original value I had for title. But now when I mouse over, 
I should see, there we go, the new value. So again, jQuery both read that particular property and updated it as well. So how about appending and prepending and moving stuff around? Also, pretty simple and probably what you can guess already. So I can add stuff to the beginning or the end of existing content. I could also move stuff around wholesale, both before and after something else. Here's a couple of examples of that. In the first line, I'm saying find something. Again, remember, everything starts with selectors. And then prepend the existing HTML content in there with the word content. In the second example, I'm actually doing a move operation. I'm saying find a thing with the ID of something else and move it in front of the thing with the ID else. In the third line, I'm saying find the thing with the ID of intro and set the text value to new text. And in the last example, I'm saying find the same thing, but set the HTML value to what you see on screen there. Now that's a subtle difference and you'll see an example of how you can mess this up in, in the next code block. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so here is my web page. It's got two paragraphs and then beneath it, I have a couple of links that I'm using as a simple way of testing jQuery's prepend, append, etc. examples. Now I'm using onclick here and as you may have heard, this is not something that you're supposed to do. But for right now, it's simple and it gets the job done. You'll see a better way of doing this later on. So my first two examples just show prepend and append. And it does pretty much what you'd expect. That first one adding Ray said and the second one appending or did he. The next two examples essentially show how we can move stuff around. So the first one will find more content and move it in front of content. The second link will say, find more content and put it after content. So basically I'm building something that can move a paragraph first in front of and then after something else. The next two examples show how to actually change the content of a particular DOM item, first using .txt and then using .html. But notice how in both cases I'm passing HTML in there. This is gonna do something different. And finally, we have a little utility function called wrap that will basically allow you to pass HTML in in wrapped pairs. You can see I have a beginning uh, bold and italics and I close italics and bold. And jQuery is smart enough to cut that in half and wrap it around the content. Let's look at this in the browser. Okay, so here's the demo. And let's start actually using those links that I built as a way to test the various jQuery operations. First prepend, there it is, and then append. Probably what you expected. Now let's try the movement. I'll move that second paragraph on top, and then I'll put it back towards the bottom. Now what about changing the actual content of the DOM? If you remember in our first example, we used the dot text method and we passed HTML. I mentioned earlier that that could possibly break. Let's see how it breaks. As you can see, the HTML was not interpreted as HTML, but passed as plain text. So that's not what I want in this case. What I really wanted was proper HTML. And you can see now that text is bold. So do you always use .html? No, it depends on what you're doing. If you're literally just changing the wording of something, then .txt is fine. If you're actually changing the structure by adding bold tags and things like that, you'll want to use .html. And finally, let's reload and look at that fancy wrap example. And there you can see it in play there. It added both bold and italics and it wrapped the beginning and the end with those tags. So how about form fields? Well, there's one main function we'll use, .val. And like before, if I do just dot val, it will get just the value of the field. But if I do dot val with some new value, it will actually then update the value of that form field. In this case, the selector will pick the particular form field that I'm working with. Let's look at a couple of examples of this. It's a pretty powerful thing, so we need to make sure we get this right. 
Okay, so here is our form example. I begin with a couple simple text fields. I then switch to a radio field, and then to a checkbox, then to a dropdown, and then to a text area. Now at the very end, I have a button where I've said, on click, I want you to run a particular function. And again, you'll see a better way of doing this. The jQuery code is pretty darn simple for the most part. For text field, we can do just dot val to get the value from there. Things get a little bit more complex when, when we begin working with the radio and checkbox fields. For radios, it's not that difficult. My selector here is saying, find me all the input fields that are of radio type and that have an attribute name of gender and finally, that are checked. Now, I kind of warn you that selectors could get a little bit complex, and this is a great example of that. It is a bit complex, but you can read it left to right and have a pretty good idea of what it's doing. It's finding the radio element with the name and gender that I checked. Now, you may say, well, why not use the exact same thing for the checkboxes? And you see an example of that right here. The issue, unfortunately, is that you may select multiple checkboxes. So this line, 65, is not enough. Now, don't forget that selectors can return more than one item. So what I did here is basically say, select all the checked items based on that checkbox with the name equals fav color, and then treat it like an array. For each one, I loop over it get the individual value and run dot val on it specifically. So drop downs, pretty simple again, just dot val and text area is the same. So let's test this out. All right, here's my form. Let's begin by filling out a few things. Raymond, with my email address, I am male. My favorite colors are green and blue. I'll pick beta and I'll fill in this is stuff. I'll run my jQuery code and we can see in my dev tools all the values from there. There's name, there's email, etc. Look how that first fab color is broken. Just like I said, it was only able to find the first one based on how I used it. But with the modified code, it picked up, picked up all of them correctly. If I go in here and if I modify stuff, jQuery has no problem noticing these changes and picking up on them in my console. Again, pretty simple. So that's reading the values. Let's look at setting them. So this page has the exact same form as before, but now I'm actually going to set values instead of just reading them. The first two lines are pretty simple. I'm setting a value of Ray and Raymond Camden at gmail.com. For the radio button, it's pretty easy, except notice this time I've said, find the input, type equals radio, name equals gender, value equals female, and set the property checked to true. I'm doing the same thing for my check boxes. I'm picking red and blue, doing the same thing for the dropdown, and then finally, I'm also setting my text area. Works the exact same as simple text fields. Let's run this and see what it does. Okay, here's my form. All the values are blank now, as you can see. I'll minimize this window a little bit just to prove it. And now when I run my jQuery code, everything gets set just like you would expect it to.